Joining me in our Washington studio is Lisa Vasidi, the director of the Energy, Climate Change, and Extractive Industries program at the Think Tank here in Washington, Inter-American Dialogue. Lisa, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. What do you make of what we saw at the United Nations yesterday at the UN Security Council with these dueling resolutions, both rejected? How, what can the UN really do at this point um, as long as member states are so polarized? Well, I think this really shows how the world is sort of divided between, um, you know, the U.S., the many European countries, the majority of major Latin American countries supporting the opposition in Venezuela, um, and then still uh, Russia, as well as China, continuing to support Maduro. So, I mean, as long as those two countries have a veto power, there's going to be a stalemate. There's not a lot that the U.N. can do, and it would probably be much later and after real free and fair elections that they would recognize a new government. The U.S. strategy up until this point has been really to apply pressure on Maduro's government. Um, is this the right approach? Is there a chance that could backfire with Maduro and his supporters saying, see, see how much they are putting pressure on us, see how they're trying to get involved? They're trying to overthrow us in a plot, which is what Maduro is essentially saying. Yeah, I think there is, there is a possibility of a backfire. I mean, the U.S. policy is to put international pressure, diplomatic pressure on Venezuela, and create a coalition of countries that are um, in, uh, on the side of the opposition. That, I think, is um, you know, welcomed by many countries in Latin America and around the world. At the same time, the other side of the approach is economic pressure, and we're already seeing a lot of impacts of the sanctions. We're already seeing reports that there are more gasoline shortages in the country because they can't import gasoline or it's much more difficult. Um, there are electricity shortages in rural areas because they can't import diesel for power generation. They're having difficulty, Venezuela is having difficulty finding buyers for its crude oil, which no longer can go to the U.S. Um, so that's going to have an impact on the humanitarian situation. And so that's where I think people might start to criticize. If, if Maduro doesn't fall, people will start to say, you know, why did you make the economic situation for the Venezuelan people worse if we don't see a, a good outcome fairly quickly. So Lisa, how do you see this playing out in the coming days, coming weeks? Maduro is not going anywhere, at least not at this point. Uh, Juan Guaido, the self-declared president and opposition leader, um, certainly doesn't have the support of top military leaders. So we're at this impasse. How do you resolve it and resolve it peacefully? Well, it's very hard to predict still at this point. I mean, I think that the more time goes on that the majority of the military or the really leaders of the military don't support Guaido, the less likely it is that it will happen. But there's, we still don't know for sure you know, whether they won't change. Some have left. Um, but it's looking increasingly unlikely. Um, there's still a possibility for negotiation. The opposition is not going to um, just go into the to negotiations uh, as they had in the past without some initial kind of promises that there will be elections. You know, they want to see some sort of concrete commitment before they go to the negotiating table, which has been used in the past by Maduro to simply delay, you know, as a delay tactic. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's still a possibility for negotiation. That would be really the only peaceful way, I think. And is there any doubt that this country is in the middle of a huge humanitarian crisis, which Maduro seems to think his country is not facing severe food and medicine shortages. No, I mean, I mean, clearly there's there's lots and lots of evidence of a humanitarian crisis, which is getting worse, and um, the attempts to bring in aid from the U.S. have failed. There is still some aid coming into the country from, you know, international aid organizations, local or aid organizations, um, but there's certainly a, a severe crisis, which I think is um, going to get worse because if Venezuela can't export all of its oil, then um, it's going to receive l even less um, international foreign currency, which it needs to buy food and, and basics for the people. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Lisa Vasidi, thank you thank so Thank you very much. much.